We and we're live. live. Okay. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Hi, Bobby. <laughs> hey, baby. How's it going? Good to see you. You too. Mwah. Mwah. How are you? I'm good. I would be better if I was in New York with fall coming. Right. Fall is nice. Do you have seasons in Texas or no? No. We have just, I'm going to move my, there we go. You could just see the top of my shelf a little bit. So it's a work, it's your working space. It's fine. That's yes. This is do, my right? office, my office space over here. <laughs> I love it. How are you? I'm good. I've been, I'm doing this virtual recording musical production of Drood right now. And it's kind of like killing me softly. Um, just because I'm a, you know me, I'm super organized and I want to know everything at the get go. What do you need? What time, when, and where this is what I want everything sorted out to begin with. But because this is our, everyone's first time doing this, we're all learning and schedules are changing and people are coming to fittings because their COVID test didn't come back in time. And it's like, it's a lot, a lot um, but we're almost done. We, they start shooting the kids on Wednesday. So, oh man. I, uh, I full a full day of fittings in person on Monday, and then I have some Zoom stuff to do on Tuesday with them. And then once they start shooting, I'm like, unless something happens with your wig, leave me alone. Call me. So before we like back up into um, into we Bobby uh, Bobby Ken's life, um, whenever you're doing the fittings and stuff in person, what mm. have you found that's different now with COVID and the protocols? Um, it's weird. Cause I actually did, um, I did a, um, a day of reshoots on a movie la two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, so from being a member of like some union groups on Facebook, I saw like what people were doing in terms of how they were packing and how they were preparing for stuff. Um, and so I tried to implement as much of that as possible with the school. Um, yeah. so what I did with the students is each of them got their own pin tray kit with their bobby pins, their hair pins, their wig caps, everything. And they have to bring that to and from filming every day. Gotcha. So that there's no cross contamination between people. When we did fittings, the school has this rule about more than one person being in a room for more than a half an hour. So like we opened up the, the two big chorus dressing rooms and the laundry, not laundry, but like, it's like a hair and makeup wardrobe. and laundry and catch all wardrobe room. So we had three different spaces. So each time I had a fitting, I would have to put the fitting in a different place. And I just was trying to be respectful of the performers and I would wipe down the counter and their chair that they were going to sit in with a clean, like a sanitizing wipe. And I would wash my hands before I touched them. And then I washed my hands after we were done. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, it's so crazy, right? All of the, it's, all of the I, And I went, I'm like, a, again, I'm the most prepared person 99% of the time. So when I would go to a film or TV set before COVID, I was always the most overprepared person as it was, which <laughs> how I was before compared to like COVID stuff now, I, I shouldn't have really had to change much because I was kind <laughs> of already there. But like I went through and I took my pin tray and I took like, little bundles of 10 bobby pins and I put them in little Ziploc bags of each color so that I'm not touching stuff. I have like a bag of combs and it's like a tail comb, a cutting comb and a barber comb, three of them in a bag. And there's like six bags in there so that like, I know that they're clean when they go in there. And so I'm just worried because everyone's like, oh, I keep all my, my brushes in this one box and these are all clean. And I'm like, but then your dirty oh, yeah. hand goes in there to get it. So I had two sets of everything. So I had like my main kit, which was like a brush, a teasing comb, a teasing brush. And I had two sets of those. So I had two clean sets. And then we would do, which I actually kind of like this. I'm probably going to do this moving forward. It's really cool. We took the metal dental tray. You put okay. the metal dental tray on your table and you sanitize it, whatever. And that becomes your clean bin, clean bin. And then I had two more smaller trays, one of which I labeled working and one I labeled dirty. So oh, as I'm working hard. on my people, again, every time they sit down, I sanitize my hands. Anytime I go to pick something up, I sanitize my hands. But if I pick up a comb and I touch my background person with the comb, that comb then goes onto my working tray. 
instead of the clean tray. And then when they're done, I move it to the, the dirty tray and I spray it down with disinfectant and then I move on to my clean stuff. Gotcha. It's a lot, but it is. It's, it's, I feel it's necessary. And if we're going to go back to work, we need to be as safe as possible. And we're, we're just lucky that our, we were able to tell them that like, we can't use gloves and curling irons. That's a safety hazard. So they were like, okay, as long as you wash your hands and sanitize when you touch people, you don't need gloves. Right. Or styling with uh, all the hairspray and gloves. Yeah. Although I did, I did a, a Broadway Cares video shoot and I was with just one actress and it was my first day back at work. And the first wig I put her in, I had gloves on. It is like impossible to pin a wig on when you're wearing gloves. And I do this for a living. <laughs> if I decided to count how many wigs I've pinned on in my life, it would be in the thousands. You too. And not There's with gloves. Millions at this point. Um, but like, I was like, I can't do this. This is weird. And then I finally was like, do you mind if I just like use my hands and sanitize? And she was like, I'm good. I'm like, okay. Yeah, it's a really interesting conundrum because there was a couple of times like I would have like a cut or something on my finger at Ka and, um, you know, we're using hairspray and we're spraying alcohol and stuff. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to wear gloves. It's fine. And then I was like, actually, I can't do it. I just need to put a Band-Aid on and suffer because yeah. I can't actually style <laughs> this way. Yeah. I, I do Why it. am I pixelated? Ugh. I don't know. It's been that. That's why I was saying you were trying to show me your cage and your decorations. And I was like, I can't really see. I don't understand. I mean, we were talking about the techni technical um, challenges. <laughs> challenges of all of this. And yeah. it is no joke. It is very true. I finally paid for like, I actually paid for a Zoom account yesterday. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> the only, but honestly, the only reason, because I don't have any plans right now. I want to eventually do group classes together, but I have to like do like a pilot and like, like I was telling you, like I have to do like a, a little like trial run first with some yeah. friends, which you will be invited to. Um, and, but like I created the second account just so that I, and I did it during the meeting so that, well, I, I made, I paid for the account so that I could make a second Zoom account so I could join the, the call so I could have my iPad and oh, my yeah. phone. Because if I joined on the same account, it had feedback. Even if they were both muted, it had feedback. But yeah, then I realized I was muting the wrong thing. So it might have actually worked and I was just an idiot. I don't know. No, but it's not you. And if anybody is out there that knows like another easy way to do this, where yeah. we have two cameras, that would be amazing because. Well, you can, you can join as like, cause I, I've done it before where I was doing a zoom call in here for like a production meeting and then, or no, I was doing a styling zoom call class and they started doing work. They were fixing my air conditioner. And so I had to move the class in here. So I went on the computer and I logged into Zoom here. So for a split second, I was in the class twice. But then the notification pops up saying, you, you're limited to 45 minutes if there's more than two people. Oh, so because then, you hadn't paid for it yet. Because I hadn't paid for it. And there were three people, even though two of them were me as the host. I think it means three, more than two devices. devices? Yeah. I think that's what they mean. But <laughs> well, at least you're clear on on this. I don't know why I am not, yeah. so I apologize. I will have to figure this out. But I can see you crystal clear, like on the Facebook feed, which is the most fabulous part that you are clear. Um, but I, I want to back up a little bit because I wanted to see, like, when you were starting out and you were younger, and um, I feel like middle school era is kind of when we start formulating mm -hmm. ideas about things that really interest us. But when did you kind of know you, or did you know you were interested in theater and and this aspect of entertainment? Got it. Um, so I loved like theater as far back as and musicals as far back as I can remember, like. I loved Annie. Like I wanted to be Annie when I grew up. Like she was my idol. Um, my mom introduced me to um, 
like Rodgers and Hammerstein, Cinderella with Julie Andrews. And we would listen to that in the car. And she had the VHS of the Leslie Ann Warren one. And I just loved all the Disney movies. And I loved a chorus line. And so when I was, and like once I got to be like eight or nine, my mom started taking me to see shows sometimes in town that would come to, to, to the city. And then it eventually got to the point where I was so up to date with what the Broadway shows were that she would just get season tickets to the tours. <laughs> So we would go see like every tour that came through. So like I actually saw opening night of the first national producers tour because it opened in Pittsburgh and my mom, oh. my mom's season, my mom's season tickets for that year were on the first night the tour was in town. And wow. then that tour then later came back to Pittsburgh and closed in Pittsburgh. And I saw it on closing night, like three years later. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wasn't that um, wonderful to that your mom um that they recognized that and my parents were the same way and really fostered it and instead of mm -hmm. being like, No, we're not going to the theater, just really like, no, this is something you love. Let's make it happen. Totally. And I like when I was little, like I was really obsessed. I like I loved I always played with dolls. So like I always liked playing with hair and clothes and stuff like that. And then when I was in, I always wanted to take gymnastics. And for some reason, my mom, like the studio never called her back. And I'm like, for five <laughs> years, whatever. So I wanted to start taking um, gymnastics when I was like seven or eight. And we went to see a studio and everything. And then they never called my mom back. So by the time I was like 11, my mom started taking me to see the shows at Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera, which is a summer okay. stock theater in Pittsburgh. Um, and they did Annie. And so I remember reading in the program that like these orphans were my age, like these girls were my age. And like, so I remember, and it said like in the program, what classes they were taking at the studio. And I was like, mom, I want to do this. And so she signed me up for the Pittsburgh Steelo Academy when I was 11. Love it. Um, and then the following year, um, because at the time, CLO would really only put a few kids in each show. Like, we went to see Rodgers and Hammerstein Cinderella at CLO when I was, like, seven. Right. And, um, and it's funny. I still have all those playbills, so I go through. And, like, Gavin Creel was in the ensemble of Cinderella. <laughs> I have like, all of mine, too, by the way. Yeah. I have, like, I'll go back through them sometimes, and I'm like, oh, oh my God, that person's a Tony Award winner now. That's crazy. And I saw them in the ensemble when I was seven in this show, but I don't remember <laughs> I actually do remember a lot of that production of Cinderella, which is weird. Um, it made an impression. It made an impression. And um, so I started taking classes and then CLO would do, they would do five or six shows a summer, each for a week or two. And usually one or two of those shows slotted to come in would be a tour. So the following summer, okay. the tour that came in was Joseph. And the this production of Joseph had... It was like the Osmonds second generation. So there were like 35 Osmonds in it. And the <laughs> youngest Osmonds were like the leads of the children's chorus. And they traveled with the show and each city would pick up like rotations of like 15, 20 kids. So I was in the opening night cast, I think. Uh, no, I was in the closing night cast of Joseph. That's just where my rotation was when I was like 11. And uh, Jody Benson, the voice of Little Mermaid Ooh. was the narrator. Was my friend's aunt jealous she yeah, that, like, that's my that's my disney princess my mom said that's the first movie i ever saw in theaters and it's still my favorite i'm still obsessed with mermaids to a weird extent like my apartment looks like an 11 year old girl lives there sometimes <laughs> and i'm fine with that um but i really start like to get back to the question i i loved all aspects of theater growing up so like we started going to see these national tours and I started getting the souvenir playbills with all the pictures mm -hmm. and I would, um, I didn't really have a lot. I didn't have a lot of friends in the neighborhood growing up. Like me and my brother were friends with the kids across the street and like, but we, they were older than both of us. So we never really played once we were past a certain age. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I would go to work with my mom in the summer because my mom owned her own business. So if I wasn't in school or summer camp, I was at my mom's office until I was old enough to be home by myself. So I started making with card with cardboard boxes and manila folders, I started making like set models of all these national tour sets at like age like 12 or 13. Like your own, uh, it was it dioramas? <laughs> yeah, but it, it eventually, originally was, it how it started was 
the box that like 10 reams of paper come in. Yeah. Cause my mom, you know, this was the nineties copy copiers, faxes, there was paper off the wazoo. Um, so I would take those boxes and I would turn them this way and I would take the manila folder and I draw the set and I just put it against the back and I'd make little, I'd make little like cardboard cutouts of people and the set pieces. And then it eventually evolved because I'm a nerd and I had no <laughs> friends growing up. It eventually evolved into an entirely constructed out of cardboard and tape and hopes and prayers, an entire theater with a fly system and a proscenium. And I built like, yeah. You had like and I would, scrims that came in I, and- I didn't have like scrims, but like I like built a whole <laughs> round of like Phantom of the Opera set pieces. I built a chandelier. I went to like Michael's. I bought fabric. I built all the little drapes. I did, did you that. Have these? No. Um, so what happened was when my mom, my parents moved that office when I was, I actually know I lied. I had to be younger. I was probably like nine or 10 when I started making those because I made a set model of Joseph, the Joseph that I was in. I made a set model of that Joseph. Um, so I had to have been younger by the time I started doing that. Because by you? then, I don't think so. No, I don't think oh, I have any. Uh, we, we weren't big camera family. Like we didn't really take. Oh, thank you, Ricky. Hi. I need to see the, <laughs> hi, Ricky. I, I wish I had pictures. But like when my mom. Cause I would save everything. Like I would save all the sets together. So I had like a Les Mis and I built a barricade and it was my mom. They, they moved um, her office building when I was in high school. So I was still doing this up until I was like 15. Cause it was a lot of fun for me. And yeah. I like, I like being handy. And you, you, I made like three doll houses at the beginning of this. Cause it was fun to get back to that. Um, but when my mom moved to the company, I was like 15. She was like, do you want me to save any of this stuff? She was like, it is all paper and tape, but it's already, some of it was like five or six years old at that point. It's like falling apart. So she, um, we like made the mutual decision that like, it's not worth it to save it. Cause it's all, it's all paper yeah. and it's paper and tape, like scotch tape. And the, the, the strings that I would use to like make the fly work where literally I would pull the fiber out of the carpet in the hallway. So it ended up being, there was like a strip of carpet that had no fiber because I kept pulling the fiber. To like, make what happened spool. here? And they're like, I could oh, just be like, mom, can you buy me a spool of yarn or something? You know, but I did it. I just pulled it out of the rug. Um, That's very so handy though. That's very it's like- very handy, yeah. Smart. And then at home, I built something similar for my Barbies. I had this like, puppet it was like a wooden handmade wooden puppet theater that had like a little stage and it had like the front and the top and it had a curtain and it was the perfect size for barbies so i would build like little mini sets and put them on the stage like i remember i had i had this one like vintage barbie and so she looked like audrey from little shop so i built like a little shop i didn't build a plant or anything but i built a little shop for her um and I like, like I said, I liked playing with my dolls. And then when I was like 12 or 13, I got my first mannequin head, like the Miss oh. Debbie with the hair. I got one of those and cause I had Barbie heads and stuff. And then with, I would make clothes for my American girl and I would, I would do all, like, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And at the time I thought I wanted to be a performer because to me, that's what theater was. Yeah. Theater was being on stage, being the center of attention. You're the star. And, um, so and I mean, granted, like in high school, I started dabbling with doing wigs for shows because people that were in the union and people that taught at special, there's like a very big special effects school in my hometown in Pittsburgh, the Tom Savini school. And so people that would teach at the Tom Savini school were also union members, but then would come in and, you know, our, some, our, our like JCC summer camp production of Oliver, they would come in and be like, oh, this is how you make your hair gray. And they would do like a little like little session class with us. So, um, That's awesome. I kind of, yeah. And I, so I knew all this stuff existed, but, um, in college, I started working a musical theater major. I started working in the costume shop and my like first day there, I told them, I was like, I don't have good luck with sewing machines. I tend to break them. Ask my mom, if you don't believe me, we have receipts. So maybe sewing isn't going to be what I should be doing here. And then the costume shop manager comes out with this wig, blonde wig that was spray painted um, with green hairspray. 
She goes, does anybody know how to wash a wig? Because it was like a whole bunch of like 10 of us new freshmen. Like, I was like, I you? I didn't. Um, but I was like, I've played with, like my mom had worn wigs in the 70s and 80s. So I had those as a kid. And in high school, we did cats. And I, I like learned how to like roller set and like steam um, a wig for our Grizabella. Like I learned how to do that. I, I didn't steam it. I put her in a bonnet dryer with a blow dryer and prayed for the best. Um, <laughs> this was, this like, was I really hope this works. Right? This is like 2004 or five. This is before YouTube. This is before anything like that. So I was really just going on little clips I'd seen on backstage videos of Broadway shows or stuff I'd maybe seen in a book that I never bought. Um, and so in college, it, originally, I was still focusing on being a performer and Wigs was just going to be my side job. My Instead of waiting tables or being a bartender, I was going to yeah. work on Broadway shows as a hair swing. And so it ended up being that like I, my first summer after beauty school, I ended up booking um, the summer at a Gunkwood Playhouse. And then I came back to the city and I started working at Mary Poppins. And again, still wanting to be an actor. And um, I just had a couple supervisors kind of break my spirit with that and tell me that like, people won't take you seriously if you have to choose, which I now in my older self, I know that like, you don't have to choose. You can do whatever you want. Don't listen to people if you want to, focus on five different things, focus on five different things. Like if it makes you happy, do it like whatever. But at the time insecurity, I was 21 years old. I didn't know. And so I kind of let that kind of kill my acting spirit, but I also was booking so much more work doing hair. It was so much easier. I just sent a resume, sent a couple pictures and I'm hired. I don't have to go right. and wake up at four o'clock in the morning and stand outside Ripley Greer to hope to get seen on the the alternate non-equity list for the Spring Awakening Third National Tour. You know, like it's, it was, it just kind of ended up being a no brainer. Um, well, I want to talk a little bit about, I talked with Emily Caitlin yesterday and we, um, there's so many different avenues you can take in theater. And mm -hmm. one of the commonalities that I'm finding with my colleagues uh, that are working professionally is that they did have some type of formal schooling. I am a total nerd and I love school. So mm -hmm. I'm always an advocate for it, especially if it's something that you're learning about that you are passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, so you did a uh, college like yes. university yeah. for musical theater. And then did you do cosmetology as well? I did. Um, and the funny thing is, is that by the time I was a senior in college, and it was funny because I ended up going to like, it, it ended up being the only school I got into, but like I ended up going to a school in my hometown and I didn't want, I wanted to go away. Like I wanted to go to if, um, Ithaca was my dream school. Like I wanted to go to Ithaca so bad, but I auditioned at Ithaca, NYU, CCM, BOCO, like I auditioned everywhere. And I ended up staying in my hometown. And um, at first I was thinking of transferring. And I had this whole plan because I was waitlisted. I had this whole plan. If I wasn't going to get in, then I was actually going to, I wanted to go to beauty school since I was in middle school. Like when I found out there was a half day where I could go to my high school for half day and then go to beauty school half a day, I begged my parents every single year to sign me up for that. And they never did. And then they wasted 40 grand on me to go to beauty school. <laughs> um, but what I was going to say is that I didn't, I mean, I'm lucky my parents were, I was very lucky and happy and grateful that my parents were able to pay for it. And I didn't have to go through loans and all of that. So. But that lucky. opportunity and is amazing. Got the opportunity. It's great. Um, and so, but the funny thing is, is that when I was like a senior in college is when I found out that there was a wig and makeup major at CCM at the time, not anymore at the time. And I hadn't, I had heard about North Carolina school of the arts and I had thought about auditioning there, but I never did. And I never, I like looked at the website and there was probably something about the application that I was just kind of like, I don't like, cause some school, like the Michigan application, I was like, I have to tell you eight months out what I'm going to do as my monologue for my audition. No, <laughs> I have to write six essays for you. No. So I ended up, so some schools got ruled out. But like by senior year, I was like, wait, I love doing this. I could have gone to college for that instead. I didn't know I, either. I always joke that had I gone to school for wigs and makeup, I'd be an actor right now. Because <laughs> I <laughs> probably. <laughs> I mean, but you know, I, I think part of it is I'm older than you, but mm -hmm. you know, back whenever we were in high school and college and looking at stuff, there wasn't like the Google 
you couldn't go no. on and just put in like wig and makeup school and then like oh, North Carolina yeah, School of the Arts. Like, no, like, no. like I didn't even have Facebook until halfway through my freshman year because my college didn't have Facebook and that was back when you had to be a college student to have Facebook. Um, so like I and, didn't, you didn't have that. Yeah. And I um, still so don't I know what, how I found out about the Westmore Academy, which is where I went to makeup school. And I still to this day cannot actually remember how I found them in Los Angeles and I was in Houston without the internet because it I didn't have it. It was like you 90. Know what it might have been like because I remember the summer camp, the sleepaway camp that I ended up going to in high school, middle school, like eighth grade, ninth grade in Colorado. Um my mom just like randomly got like a pamphlet in the mail for it. And I was like, I want to go to this camp. That sounds fun. And it turns out that like, I think my dad had met somebody and had written down the name of the camp and like had called to get the thing in the mail. But like, it might've been something like that where like someone in your family was like, Oh, you know, Megan likes makeup. And then they might've seen an ad in a magazine or heard from a family friend mm -hmm. or something. And then, but who knows? There's weird. They 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 had weird ways of finding us back then before algorithms and the internet. They were able to find. I you know, them, I, but they did. I had a friend that was at Mud that we were roommates uh, in LA, but um, she's from here. But I didn't even go to Mud, so yeah, I just I yeah. don't know. It's it's always uh, it's a mystery, as they say in uh, Moulin Rouge. Yes, <laughs> the mystery. Mister, yeah, Mister. <laughs> But you know, you did do continue your performing because you do drag sometimes. Yes, I do. So like I, the last show that I was in, I was in a production of Fiddler on the Roof when I first moved to the city. It was a community theater production in 2010. It was like right after new year. So I was actually still in beauty school while I was doing this show. And I okay. got it because I ended up getting all of these equity stage managers as clients when I was at the Aveda. I went to the Aveda Institute in New York. And I ended up getting all of these stage manager clients. And one of them was like, wait, so you're an actor? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, do you know Fiddler? And I was like, I'm a Jew, of course I know Fiddler. She was like, here. And she like wrote down like an email. She was like, email them, they're looking for guys. And I was like, okay. And I literally went in and sang like 16 bars and they're like, you're in, you're a guy, great. And I ended up doing the hair and makeup for it while I was in it. <laughs> um, but that's the last show show that I was in. But I do drag occasionally, and I did do drag rather gung ho for a minute, and then I took a break, and then I did it rather gung ho for a minute again, and then it's been a while. But lately, a lot of my musical theater friends, because they're not working, they do weekly musical readings on Zoom, and so every, and it's like a Sunday and a Wednesday matinee basically, and they announce what the show they're doing the week before, and you sign up, and you're like, I want to play blah 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 blah. So like since quarantine has started, I got to play The Witch in Into the Woods. I got to play Mama Morton in Chicago. What? I got to play The Plant in Little Shop. And I got called after the reading started to come do The Plant because their plant dropped out. And But they're my friends. And they and I had said, I'll be anybody. They're so like, oh, I, yeah. I Yeah, right. And I got to be Dr. Potomer and Waitress, which like is actually a dream role of mine and was a lot of fun to do. Um, and the last one I did was they, and they'll do multiple casts, especially if it's a small show. Oh, we did Wicked and I played everybody. <laughs> like there was an Elphaba, uh, Glinda, Elphaba, Glinda, Fiero, Bach, Nessa. And then I was literally everybody else. And I had like- <laughs> And had, the chorus. And the chorus and Madame Morrible and the wizard and Dr. Dilliman and her mom and her dad. And like, so I was, I had all these different hats that I would switch and everyone had their own different accent and it was a lot of fun. Um, but the last one I did, we did, um, she'll do multiple casts. And so the last one she posted was, we're going to do a reading of six. And there were so many comments that she ended up doing like 10 casts of it. And enough guys wrote in saying, I'll be anybody that we did an entire male reading of, of, Sick. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so I got to be, I was Catherine of Aragon, which is the only one that I never actually, like, sang through. And I was like, oh. But the good thing is, is she's first, and then I was done. I was like, cool. I just have to say some dialogue here and there, and then I'm done. <gasps> hey, Jenny, how are you, Jenny? Oh, 
I'm on my wrong screen. Oh, Jenny. Oh, yeah. Hi, Jenny. The class, the classes I took, I I taught last yeah. year. Yeah, she's yeah. so so sweet. Yeah, she's Jenny's a sweetheart. Um, a huge fan uh, um, and advocate of the school since we started. And oh, that's you know, great. Yeah, she's always amazing. A multitude of classes with you guys, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But yeah. yeah. It sounds so six like was it um, six was a show that you were kind of obsessed with there for a minute because for a second and it was I felt so like I felt like such like a five year old because I haven't been like this for a Broadway show in a while How and, like, and like I haven't been like that in a while and like I'm friends with the guy who's the wig designer coming over from London to do it Samuel. and Samuel yeah and so I was like. If you need any help when you're here, let me know. If you need anybody to help you out, let me know. And so I was like, whoa. I was like, Bobby, you're going like fan girl on your friend. So like he he did get me because he came back and I was like, he was talking, oh, oh yeah, you know, like we're we're going and we're having tech and everything. And I was like, well, if you end up getting an, a ticket for invited dress, you don't know what to do with, let me know. And he was like, oh, totally. So like he got me a ticket to invite a dress of six. Oh, and I'm meeting our mutual friend. And so we were like the last people to get in the theater. And so we were like way at the top, like nosebleed. But <laughs> they only stopped, it was a dress rehearsal. They only stopped once. It was good. Wow. Um, yeah, they only stopped once, final dress. Um, but yeah, I was kind of obsessed with it for a while. So like to get to like do it was fun. Yeah. Even though I, I, wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't want to be specific cause I was like, I'll be anybody cause I know all the songs. But I really wanted to be Anne Boleyn or Jane. <laughs> or Jane. Or Jane. I, love I always it. said that, like, because I wanted to do, like, a drag six before everything ended. And, like, I had a lot of friends that were, like, up for it. And I had two different casts in my head. I had, like, live sync cast. So if it was live sync cast, then I was going to be Anne Boleyn. But if it was lip sync cast, then I was going to be Jane Seymour with the tearaway reveal. But then it never happened. Yeah. And then and it I was will. Kind of on, on Zoom. But they're fun it's, and like we can have like we can send the link out to our friends. So like if I want yeah. if like, I wanted my mom to come see me or like if you're I could the next time I they're doing yeah. Adam's family and Beetlejuice next week, both, and I'm so yeah. mad that I can't do either of them. I'm so mad. Oh. But you were you were I kept going about musicals and you had another topic. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. I mean, it's great. I think that that's uh, another question, though, is, um, you know, you are in Manhattan. You live in you live in New York. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you find it living there? You Because you've traveled quite a bit and stuff and mm -hmm. definitely I've brought you to Vegas to work and all this stuff. Um, but how do you like living there? Some people, you know, are like, oh, it's OK. But then other people are like, they're like, arts and the culture and yeah it's um i love it and like i can't the only other place where i can live and do what i do where i'm not somewhere full time and i just kind of pop in and cover people the only other place that i would be able to do that would have been vegas and like you know for a while i was like i kind of want to move to vegas i want to move here this would be fun i could have a whole warehouse for my website instead of hundred square feet like yes, you and could. i could and very i trust i looked it up for half <laughs> now no work i could have like an a 500 square foot office with a 1200 square foot warehouse behind with a loading door for like 1500 bucks a month and i was like i want to do this but it just ended up like I was like, eh, to do that and move that far. So kind of what I'm thinking of doing now, I'm definitely staying in New York, like I'm not going anywhere, but kind of what I want to work towards now is eventually get to a point where I can get an investment property back home in Pittsburgh. So what I want to do is either buy like, like a shop with an apartment above it or buy like an apartment that's like a three story apartment thing and then move my website stuff. So like this, we're in my office, which is the website inventory room. So like all my blocks and all my, these are all the boxes that have to go out today. Um, but like all my inventories in here. So I ideally want to move this part to Pittsburgh so that then I can expand my styling stuff into here and put a sink in here and cabinets and a fridge and like really like outfit this for design and people coming in and having fittings and stuff like that. 
and then having the place in Pittsburgh be where I run everything from, but then like Airbnb, one of the apartments so that like when I go home, I can stay there. Right. And I would, there's several equity regional theaters in Pittsburgh and I would love to be the wig designer for any of them. Um, and I just haven't, I've never had the opportunity. Um, I know, I know like I, they reached out to me once and I was unavailable and I was like, and ever since then, the same guy has done it every summer, this guy, Jeff. So he's done it every year ever since. So I've been like one day, maybe one day. Well, and this is a good time, I think, for people that are maybe going to watch this that um, are not as familiar with your work is that you you have a couple of different hats. Yes. Even then, what we've talked about is that, you know, you have Wigging Out and then you have BobbyPins.com yeah. where you can buy all kinds of supplies for wig making and styling mm -hmm. and um, and wigs and, and that kind of stuff. And then you have your designing stuff. Which and my rental have, business. And rentals, and then you also and, have like the and, giant drag wigs that you're super known for and drag race. And so you have like a couple of different. Just yeah, few. I have a couple of different things going on. And kind of what happened was I got into drag wigs sort of by accident. Like I just um, was in between jobs and I didn't want to go back to working at drag. Actually, I think I did go back. The only time I ever worked in a salon was I worked at dry bar twice each time for like six months. Mm -hmm. um, and the first time I did it, I worked at, I opened dry bar at six or seven in the morning and I would leave at like two, I'd go home and nap for a couple hours. And then I would do an evening show at Memphis or Mary Poppins. And then eventually I was working like eight shows a week between the two of those shows. Cause I knew three tracks on both. So I was like, I don't need the salon job anymore. I'm making more money over here. Bye. But then eventually uh, Memphis closed, Mary Poppins closed, and I had designed um, a couple off-Broadway shows where I would go in weekly and do maintenance and touch-ups, and then those closed. So I was like, what am I going to do? So I went back to Dry Bar part-time, and I started going to, like, wig shops, and I started buying whatever wig was on that last, like, that last call wall where they're all a little fried and everyone's pulled their hands through the curls and whatever, I would buy those, those $10, $12 wigs. I'd go to the other aisle, I'd buy a pack or two of hair and I'd sew it together and I would sell it on eBay just to like make some sort of money is what I was doing. And then it eventually got to a point where I was doing them enough on eBay that I was like, I want to sell other stuff too to maybe get in a little more money. So I borrowed a thousand dollars from my savings. I say I borrowed it from my parents, but it actually came out of my savings account that I didn't have access to at the time. So it was my money, but like, so wow. I got $1,000. I used my parents' business license to open wholesale accounts and I started ordering stuff to resell. And it wasn't really until I started using Instagram a lot that like drag queens started reaching out to me to like do their hair. Um, and that's kind of where it started. It was all, I always call it a happy accident, but it was never really my passion. Like my passion always was theater. And for the longest time, I didn't know how to build. Like I could ventilate, I could do a front, but I didn't know how to build. And so I decided that like, you know what? I've done six seasons of Drag Race. I've had I've had two girls win all stars in my stuff. I've had people make it to the top three on the other seat. Like I was like, I don't wanna, I want to do what I want to do. And so I made the conscious effort. I went to the UK, I went to the wig academy. I did a one month wig course there, which was amazing. I learned how to make foundations. And then I came back. And then I had to go, of course, because I had already committed to doing Drag Race stuff. I then had to do another full season of Drag Race and All Stars and Drag Con, LA and New York. And then I was like, I'm done now. I'm done. <laughs> so then there was, and I was like, I'm done with Drag Race. I don't want to do it anymore. I just, I, it hurts my soul. It's not my passion. Why am I getting so worked up about something that ultimately isn't my passion? Is really what what changed for me. I was like, this isn't really what I do what I want to do. And it's causing me so much stress and anxiety and making me angry. And like, I was really bitter. Like I was, I went through a really, really like dark, nasty. I was mean to everybody phase for a couple years in there just because I didn't, I wasn't, I was young. I was 24, 25. I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know how to run a business. I didn't know how to deal with all of this stuff. And it just kind of made me into a nasty person for a while. And um, so eventually I stopped with the drag stuff, focusing just on, 
theater. And then um, it's funny because I'm not a, I'm not like, I don't, I'm like spiritual, but I also kind of think I might be a witch, but I don't know. Um, but like my, fr I was in Denver last January. I went to Denver to visit my friend and we went to her witchy store and she bought me what's called like an intention candle or a dressed yeah. candle. And basically if the viewers don't know, um, you get this candle and there's different base candles. So basically you go there and you tell them, this is what I want. This is what I want to manifest. So I told them I'm in the middle of a career shift. I want, I'm in the middle of a career shift. I want to focus on what I, what I really want to do. And I want to avoid people taking advantage of me. And I want to avoid just nasty people. And I just, I want to just get, I want to focus on this and I want to focus on me. And so he chose a candle called road opener was what the candle base was. They drill a hole in it and they pick out essential oils that oh. they take the scented oils and they are like, okay, so you want luck. So this essential oils for luck and they pour some in there. Oh, you want protection. This one does that. Oh, you want guidance. This one does that. And they pour this into the candle. Then they seal it with wax. And then every time you light the candle, you say like what you want. Yeah. And you're like, I want blah, blah, blah. So I got that candle, didn't even light it. Two days later, I had two summer stock offers in January. You're putting that intention out there. Because I put that intention out there, yeah. And so then now the candle's almost burnt out because it's a year and a half, almost two years old at this point. So I'm going to have to get another one at some point. There are places in the city where I can do it. Um, but this dress candle, like it's been great. And like, I've realized that like, I have to be very specific with it because I said for emoji land, for instance, like if I'm going into a tech process, I like to light my candle. And, and I said for emoji land, I want this to be an easy tech process is what I said. I should have said, I want this to be an easy tech process for everyone because it was easy for me and not for anybody else. And there's been other instances like that too, where I've been like, I want this, or this is what I want to manifest. And then I kind of get it, but it was something that like, I didn't specify. Um, and I've also noticed that like, if my heart isn't in it, then it doesn't work. So like right. when, when I was doing, so emoji land, I, the night before opening, I lit my candle and I said, I want, um, I want us to get great reviews. I want this to lead to more opportunities. I want all of this. I want this show to be very well received. The next day, the New York Times critic pick, opening night critic pick. And they mentioned my name in the review. And then that was the night that the set designer was like, you're getting a drama desk nomination for this. I hope you know that. And I was like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. He was like, no, you're going to win is what he said. And I was like, yeah, right. Whatever. So then I lit my candle and I was like, I want a drama desk nomination for Emoji Land. And then Corona happens, which the whole point of Emoji Land was a virus that, <laughs> really, that killed people. So it was very weird timing for this show to happen, but also at the same time dealing with human rights issues and racism and all of that, but in a candy colored emoji world. So very, very, at first I was like, I don't know how this show is going to do after this is over, but how this pandemic has planned out, I think Emoji Land is going to be very, very popular based upon, it's a commentary on what's happening right now before it even happened, which is weird. Um, yeah. And so I lit my candles, like I want my drama in nomination. And then fast forward, you know, we close and it wasn't even on my mind. I was in Pittsburgh. And then like, I get the, the, like the, I see on Facebook, they're announcing the drama desks on this day. And I was like, okay, because we had, at that point, the Lortels had come out and some other awards had come out and we were really only getting noticed for our um, projection design, which was incredible. Projection design was incredible. And so that's really what we were getting noticed for. And that's where all the nominations were coming were for projections. And so the drama desk, nominations started and I'm watching it's like a live feed like this on YouTube and people pop up to read the yeah to read and um their costume de costume design was before me 
And so they do costume design. And Vanessa, our costume designer, got a nomination. And I was like, oh my God. And I like ran out in the living room and Ruth, my best friend was out there, Ruth Ann, who you know. And I was like, oh my God, Vanessa just got it. I'm like freaking out. And I run back in the room and I close the door and I'm sitting there for like another two minutes. <laughs> and, then, and it was Seth Rudetsky, who I love anyway, who I'd never met, but I'm obsessed with him. He, get it, obsessed, Seth Rudetsky. Da, 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 da. And so he reads the wig design nominations. And I started to realize by how they were saying the names that it was alphabetical order. My first so, name. And my last name is a Z. So I was like, okay. okay. And by, by last name. So I'm like, okay, Campbell. And so I was like, okay, Cookie Jordan. Okay. Okay. Um, I, there was another, another woman whose name is escaping me right now. And I was like, okay. And then there were three and then it was Campbell Young and Associates for Tina. And I was like, okay, there's going to be five. What's going to be after that? And then it was me. And I was like, Ugh! and I like, I like screamed and I like ran into the kitchen. I called my mom my mom and I actually aren't on good terms kind of lately, but I yeah. called her and I like gush about how excited I was and everything for this. Um, but getting back to like the candle. So I was so heart set that I was going to win. I was like, I looked at, I walked, I looked at all the other shows, what they looked like. I looked at what they did and everyone deserved that nomination. We all did. But I just, I kind of looked at like what I created with the tinsel and with the manic panic colors that I utilized. And I was okay. like, I have this in the bag. This is in the bag. This is me. This is all me. And then the day that the drama desks were supposed to be was the day that all of the protests started. So they actually, the day of called it and they were like, we're canceling and postponing this and we're not going to do it for a while. We'll let you know. So instantly I was kind of shut off from it. And I was like, there is so much more in this world to focus on right now than these stupid drama desks. Like, so I actually it completely exited my mind and I like forgot about it until we get the announcement. The drama desks are going to be on this day. So they announced when they are. And I remember making a Facebook post that I then soon deleted because I didn't want it to be taken the wrong way. Um, but I, I said something like, I'm glad that the drama desks are postponed because I don't like, I feel guilty feeling happy during all of this, something I kind of like that. I think that that was a, a big sentiment, this, especially this past summer. Yeah. Cause you know? it was so much. And then they announced the day that it was, and I just was kind of like, whatever, if I win, if I win, if I don't, if I don't. So the night of the live, the live stream, this was the last time I lit my candle. I was like, I want to win the drama desk. And I lit it and I sat down and watched the live stream and the five shows in the category, um, four were off Broadway and Tina was the Broadway, was the one Broadway show in the category. And much like, and I love the drama desks and I'm just, I'm happy that I was included and I'm happy to be, you know, you know, that I was included in my nomination, but like, I noticed this with almost every design category. Most of the nominees were off Broadway with one or two Broadway nominees, but then the Broadway show always won. So like for costume, I think Moulin Rouge was the only Broadway show nominated and that's what won. For wigs, Tina was the only Broadway show that was nominated and that won. And I'm not saying that like Campbell Young and Luke are not, they, are, they make the most beautiful wigs that I've ever seen. And they make the most well-fitting wigs I've ever seen. And their win was so, so well-deserved. They work so hard and their work is so beautiful. And I'm just happy that I was included considering my entire budget for Emoji Land was what one of their wigs costs. <laughs> you know, and like, I was sad, but like I talked to Vanessa, the costume designer about it. And we both kind of commiserated that like, it's great to have all these off-Broadway shows nominated, but if you're gonna pick the Broadway show in every category, what's the point? And so yeah. I think, I mean, I, I, if you're watching out their drama desks, I think how the <laughs> drama desk should structure it is much like how they do for the high school musical theater award ceremonies where they do it by budget tiers. Oh yeah. Where, or level like off Broadway, 300 seats or smaller, off Broadway, 400 seats and larger, uh, and then just Broadway. Like, I think it would be more fair to all of us in the categories if it was sort of split up like that. Because that if, you put, if you put four off-Broadway shows 
up against one Broadway show in a category, what's going to win? Yeah. No, and it like, makes absolute uh, sense. It's like yeah. putting Ka up against um, a black box theater. Right. It's like putting Ka up against freaking Diva, the Divas show that closed. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like you can't, it's apples and oranges. You can't, yeah. you can't do that. Like, um, going back to your candle, because yeah. I had this discussion yesterday with uh, Emily, the makeup artist. And so Kelsey, who you know, and I talk about all the time in I life and on this show. <laughs> what? Um, I mean, I love you too. But like, it was always, it was nice whenever I said, I said, Kelsey's the best. I love her. And you were like, what? And I was like, but I love you too. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but I, I talk about her all the time because she's yeah. she doesn't live here, but she's still my she's best friend. Like, that's your girl. But, we went to Sedona um, after I had Aiden and both of us were trying to figure out life and what we wanted to do and the next journey and path and blah, blah, blah. So in Sedona, it's magical with all the vortexes. And so we went to the store and they had all of the affirmation candles and you could choose different ones. Yep. And what I found, cause I grew up kind of religious. I'm not anymore, mm -hmm. um, but I am definitely spiritual and, um, believe that there are powers at work the outside powers, of me. There's something out there. I don't really yeah. know what it is, but I believe it's there. Yeah. But I think that those candles are really great in a sense that it forces you for a moment. And some people might do this in prayer. Some people might do it mm -hmm. in meditation. Some people use the, the physical form of a candle, but it forces mm -hmm. you in that moment to pause, think about what you're wanting in your life, and focusing that energy and putting it into the universe in a single yes. path. Yeah. And then it's amazing what comes from that, yep. you know, that you don't really realize. And it just, it keeps coming up with people that I'm having discussions with and it's yep. a, it's an amazing commonality. And I mean, I manifested for years before I got a candle and it wasn't yes. even like, I never even thought of it like that. And I never really thought of it as like manifesting or whatever. I would just say putting it in the universe. Yeah. So like I've said it multiple times where it's like, I've actually been meaning to light my candle. Um, I don't know if it's bad luck to say what I'm going to light my candle about. Is that bad luck? I don't know. I don't um, know. Well, I don't think it works like that. I don't want to say that either. Well, I mean, we'll see if it happens, but they put on Facebook, someone said that like they want to do a Hocus Pocus Broadway musical. And I was already planning on doing my when, my Sanderson sisters that I'm so mad that I have to be on my computer for this because they've been in they've been in my background of every Zoom call I've done the past like three days since I finished them. They're in the background all the time because I'm so proud of them. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so many TikToks yet to be posted that I have made with those those witches. So they're <laughs> I'm gonna try to stretch them out all October. I'm going to try because as of now, I have one that I posted and I have four more that I edited already. And then I have three more that I recorded that I haven't edited. And then later on this month, I have another Winifred and another Sarah to do for custom orders. So I'll probably do another batch of videos around then too. But yeah, I want to just, man yeah, I want to manifest that I want to do the, I want to design the wigs when it happens. It's going to happen. It's yeah, I want to, and I just want to manifest and put that in the universe. But like I was saying, I used to just say things into the universe to just speak it out. And I, cause, and then event, I, I started realizing this worked like saying this out worked, like saying this out loud was working. And I was like, okay, doesn't always work exactly like you want it. Right. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it takes a couple of years, but like, I, like I, I feel that like, you're ready for everything that comes to you when it comes to you. Yeah. Like, you know, like my, like it wasn't, I wasn't ready to win a drama desk. Like from yeah. a design standpoint, a lot of the wigs and Tina fully handmade from the foundation up. All of mine were refronts factory made or John Blake ba bases, human hair bases that I refronted. So like, you it's know, like not the right time yet which it's just not the right time for me yet. No, because I'm not doing, and that's why I didn't get upset about it, Cause I was like, I'm not at their level yet. This isn't yeah. where I am yet. That's where they are. And it just wasn't my time yet. 
But I think also it's important, um, again, to reiterate to, to the people watching, and I think the ones that know you absolutely know this is true, but the other ones that are just kind of out in the ether that see just the TikToks and the Instagram and the website, and they think that maybe it's like a, a you live in a, and all of this stuff just happens, is that I would definitely qualify you as a workaholic. And um, <laughs> sometimes. Especially and now, that, I went from like coming to the studio three days a week and being here for like four or five hours a day to coming in and doing 10 hour days, six days a week, the past like three weeks. It's, I just was like, when did I start working again? What the? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I I'm think that you work that. really, really hard mm -hmm. um, to make all of these things happen. They don't just happen. Yeah. You know, I was, I woke up at six 30 every day the past four days. And that was really in it could, because I have my zoom fittings for a show I'm doing and I have all these other things and I have custom orders to do, but a lot of it was the Sanderson sisters. And what actually happened was I ventilated all three of them at home. And so I would take one off the block, put her in her little Ziploc bag on my shelf and then go to the next one. So I finished, I did Winnie first, then I did Sarah, then I did Mary. So after Mary was done, she just kind of sat in my, uh, academy little cradle that i have little plug plug <laughs> and i just was like oh i need to take those uh last saturday i was like oh i have to take those to the studio so i can get them set and i literally like scrolled on it's actually no i think i erased it but i was like set all three sandersons record tiktoks do all of this and then i opened my bag and i had only brought mary with me because the other two were in their bags on my shelf i just in my head thought that i brought all three so then that put me behind a whole day oh, and then man. I'm literally getting up at 6 30 the past like four days and i was here at the studio by eight and what ended up happening was actually like wonderful i was like about to start and because recording tiktoks at least the kind of tick i like to do like when you like change yeah. like, put changes and stuff i like to do i like to figure out cuts and stuff so i can't move my wig stand or my camera while i'm doing that so I'm trying to balance doing these Zoom fittings. And so I had a Zoom fitting for Drew, And I had like, I think I had done Sarah and I had started Mary, I think. And then I, I recorded what I needed to record. And then I go to do my Zoom class. And my Zoom classes, I was supposed to have like six back to back, each a half an hour, no break in between all day. I had my first one at 10 a.m. And then everyone else canceled because they hadn't gotten their wigs yet. And then I had a four o'clock and a 4.30. So I was then able to style both of them right away. And I was like, oh my God, oh, I'm done. So like it ended up working out. But then I was like, oh, now I have to, luckily I recorded the TikToks as I was working. Like I would record like an intro of three different videos. And then I, but I, I time-lapsed everything. So like, yeah. any, like all my rollers, all my styling, all me taking out the rollers, I recorded on time-lapse in addition to the like little uh, parts. Um, so I was able to kind of do it in succession. Um, but when those, when those fittings were canceled, I was like, ugh, thank God. And then today- I have things to do. <laughs> I think my 10 o'clock didn't have her box in time. So she didn't come to the meeting. She got her box at 11 and I was like, okay, I'll fit you in at 11. I'll fit you in at one. She couldn't come in at one, but then I was able to go and shop for leave and go and shop for facial hair for Drood that I have to ship at some, I don't know, at some point. So the kids have it next week. And I had to buy like other stuff at another store for a custom order. And so I was like, okay, because she couldn't do the thing today, I was able to then do other things. But then I have to take time out of next week at some point to fit her in. Yeah. And that's, that's what gives me anxiety. And that's what makes me angry and not want to talk to people is when <laughs> I when I'm not in charge of my schedule, you know, like that's what makes me like, I'm like, oh, okay, I, I, taught, I taught a fronting class yesterday. That thing was in my calendar for a month. So I was like, okay, Thursday, the first, I am teaching a fronting class and my Winifred, all of my wigs need to be finished and photographed before I start that class. But, yeah. and they were, but had those Drew things not been canceled, they might not have been. Right. But um, you and I are similar. We like lists. We like crossing things off. Are you a Virgo? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. 
Yeah. But yeah, lists and like visual seeing like this is done, this is done, this is done. And the list might not make sense to other people, but I know exactly what those mean and those dates. Yeah. And I have like things. four dry erase boards here that I write <laughs> everything on to keep track. I've lately now, um, cause I accidentally missed my first zoom fitting that I had with a guy and then he was, he was cool and he ended up slotting in at the end of the day after my other two fittings. But like I now I'm setting alarms for stuff. So like I set an alarm for this for like 4.45 because I was like, I'm going to get here early. Megan and I can chat first. And my friend Paula was here actually. I sold her a mask and we were just talking. And I was like, oh, I got to kick you out now. It's 4.45. Bye. Like Because my alarm went off. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Bye. I it's, know. But it's it's the not not being able and constantly having to change stuff that I'm just like, are we done <laughs> Are we filming yet? Are we done? Oh my gosh. I think that we will have to do a, a second parter of this because um, we oh, I've talked been so here. much. I'm sorry. And we've been here an hour and I've talked. No, about it's so fantastic. But um, I think that it would be really fun to come back with you maybe after um, Drew is kind of up and going and um, Halloween because then we can see like all of the Winifred, like the whole Hocus Pocus. Thing come to life. Oh yeah, they'll all come out by then. And I'm actually doing, cause I do three styled wigs each week. And yeah. again, because I'm an overachiever, I was originally going to do, I'm I was going to announce the winner. I was going to do the full set of, of the Sanderson sisters as an auction. And I was going to announce it yesterday. And then the Sarah auction was going to be today, tomorrow. And then Mary was Monday, Tuesday. And Winnie was Wednesday, Thursday. And then the following that next Friday, I was going to do like a hand tied hairline poison Ivy. And then that was going to be on auction that weekend. And then the next week was going to be a hand tied and hand colored Harley Quinn. And, and then each week of my Halloween wigs, were going to have a theme. And then about a week and a half ago, I was like, why are you putting so much extra pressure and work on yourself when you don't have time to do what you already have to do? So now it's just my three standard wigs a week, but one of them is like a Halloween color. So like this week I had an orange wig with dark roots. I have a purple wig and a green wig coming up. And then I actually have this really awesome wig that I haven't gotten in yet from a new supplier that is like, like a Cruella where it's like half black, but it's Ooh. half orange. Oh, like a pumpkin. Yeah. So it's like black and orange. And so I'm really excited to get that in. I want to do some sort of like, victory roll thing with like all the color swirling and i think it'll be cool um so that's what i'm doing for halloween now just because i i had to make it easier on myself because i would have gone crazy yeah and I, it's just I feel me. you it's just me i'm doing all the website orders i do all the online ordering i do all the supplying ordering i do all the wigs i did all the hairlines i did send the other winnie i have i did send it off to a builder i shipped it to her in the mail um, and she's working on that for me just because it was a full front and it was like a four finger front. And I was like, don't have time. You're, you're better at this and faster than me. And I'll just pay you. It's fine. <laughs> I'll give you my money. <laughs> I'll give you my, I'll give you money. And I also like, I didn't like overcharge the guy, but like, I could kind of tell from his emails that he was going to be a little difficult in particular, which is fine. Be particular, be difficult. But sometimes it can come across the wrong way. And in the beginning, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know. He kind of seems, so I charged him like an extra hundred that I normally would. Um, and he's been fine. Um, but like, it's, I just was like, you might be a little hard to please. And so if I'm going to be doing all of this and redoing stuff, which I might have to do. Might not have like, time. Mm -hmm, I might not have time. But honestly, like I quoted him the price and then we agreed upon it. And then I was super specific. And I was like, these are all the Winifreds I've done before. I've done them in multiple different colors. I've done different blends. I've done solid. I've done a shit ton of blonde. I've done no blonde. This is what I've done. These are all the different comb outs I've done. This is the most screen accurate one that I've done. This one's my favorite. This one I didn't like. Um, would one of these options work for you? And he was like, yeah, I like the color of this one. I like the front of that one. I like the styling of that one. And I was like, oh, right. you're actually easy to deal with. Isn't cool. that funny? Yeah, it was fine. So I like, I just was like, I feel like he's going to be very specific. So then I was very specific. And then our specificities worked out. I love it. But I think that's part of, you know, 
I don't know, being a professional, I always tell people, you have to know what you don't know. So you know what to spend your money on. And wait, so they certain, to know what you know, wait. what you don't know. Okay. So then you know what to spend your money on. So there are certain things that I'm like, I don't know how to do that very well. So I'm going to pay somebody to do that. That yep. does it so well and quickly instead of me yep. monkeying around and trying to figure it out and spending three times the amount of money and time. Yep. And a, <laughs> for me right now, like I probably would have had the time to do the full front. Like I would have had the time on my own, but like, her name's Ariana. She's one of my like strongest builders and she's my first choice. Like anytime I have a project, I go to her and then her girlfriend also not. So if she's not available, I'll be like, it's Ashley. And she'll be like, sure. So then like I'll text Ashley. And if then neither of them are available, then I just, I just go down the line. Yeah. But like, um, when I'm busy and I'm working and I'm swinging eight shows a week and I'm doing film and TV during the day and I'm working on other design things as a whole, like I don't have time to do hairlines. Yeah. Like, I, I was, I mean, on Emoji Land, I ended up, I ended up passing off all the full fronts on Emoji Land, and then I did all the augmentations. So like, I had to make the widow's peak bigger. I had to make the sideburn longer, and then all of the the, the hand tied tinsel. I did all of that too. Yeah. Which is yeah. not <sighs> tinsel. I only hand tied tinsel once, and it was. Um, I'm okay not to do it again for a while. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I do prefer it though. The tinsel that I have is like flat and flat oh. and thin, very thin. It's like, it's not like tubular. It's flat and thin, almost like mylar. Yeah. And I bought a whole bunch. I bought rainbow colors of them on Amazon because I just didn't know what we were going to need. And I ended up only using like three colors of it. Um, but the thing that I like, because I have, the, I have wigs now that I sell that have tinsel in them. And it ended up being one of the, um, we had... The woman who was one of our leads had in her contract a week where she was not going to be in the show. And then towards the end of the run, she also had contracted dates where she was doing a TV show where she was out. So we knew we were going to have someone come in for a week and then we were going to have a, an actual cover as well. So what I did was I pulled a pink tinsel wig from my site and I dip dyed it. So it was kind of her wig was dark in the light pink. So it became light into dark pink for like the swing and the cover or the, the alternate and the cover. And that tinsel that was in that wig was almost like poly, like mono thread. And the second I dipped it in the dye, it all just and shriveled up. Like all the tinsel like shriveled up from the heat. So I just like steam the whole thing out to get the tinsel to stretch back out. And then I just went in in the front with my tinsel and then that tinsel is fine. I mean, it doesn't curl. It does not curl at all. But like it, I, I'm able, I was able to do it in those wigs in a way that like it didn't need to curl because of the way it was dressed. But, but this is, I think, indicative of, um, of being a, a professional in this industry is that there's always going to be something new that yeah. you maybe haven't worked with. Or you, I can't tell you how many projects um, Kels and I got and we would be like, huh, how are we going to do that? They want to, okay. And then we had to like piece together all of this knowledge from <laughs> these other projects or that, that we've done to figure out to, how to make it work. And then the trial and error process, you know, pro process. And um, so you don't have it all figured out, but I think that that's part of it is being open to knowing that and having fun figuring it out. And not totally freaking out when right when it doesn't go your way or whatever. And then also for me, I find that like because at least like with what I do, like right now with like my 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 uh, stage readies and my custom orders, I just I get a lot of people want the same thing. Like I'm known for my finger waves; that's what people want. Um, and so like I just recreated an updo today that was a recreation of an updo from a class that I did a month or so ago that I sold on my website, mm. which was a recreation of a wig that I had done from a show. And the first, the one, the wig for the show was done on a cage. Um, oh. It was like, a, it was, it was um, for Disenchanted. It was for um, the princess who kissed the frog. She starts in this like huge, crazy ball gown and like a toddlers and tiara updo with a big crown on it. And she quite changes into something more modern and like sexy. 
But um, so it was this huge updo that I built on a cage. And this guy wanted me to do it for a class. And so I told him, I was like, well, this actually was built on a cage. Um, so this is the case. I sent him the link from Bossy. I was like, this is the cage. Um, we can do it with donuts, but we're going to need a lot of donuts and it's probably going to be heavy. And then he wrote me back and he's like, oh, I can do not donuts. He's like, I also, I just took Annie Hart's cage class. I know how to make a cage. And I was like, well, you know, like, I think that the amount of time it's going to spend for you to make this cage to do this wig, I was like, it's not really worth it. I think in the long run, um, to make a cage specifically for this, I was like, let's just do donuts. So then we did donuts, and then I sold that wig and I waited. It was five pounds. Granted, it was a full wig, two packs of extensions, like five or six donuts, and like fifty of those sparkly hair sticks. So there was a lot going on, but it weighed like five pounds. So this guy wanted me to recreate it. And so now I'm doing it. The, I did it today. I finished it this morning or this afternoon. Cause I had to, again, keep going through and move and fix stuff. But I did it. I did it with a long wig, less donuts, and then a short wig on top for the updo. And it, it like visually looks exactly the same as the other one from before, but it was put together differently. And that's what I like about recreating stuff is like, how do I make it better or easier for myself again? Yeah. That's super cool. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a lot, but he liked it. And I had to go buy this. I was like, you want the sparkle sticks, right? And he's like, yeah. So I had to go buy the sparkle sticks today. That's what I had to run out and buy in addition to sideburns and mustaches. I mean, um, that's always a good errand going by sparkle sticks. I love I it. Love, ugh, if you, when you come to New York, I'm going to take you to all the cheap costume jewelry places and yes. you can go like, like the two, like a tube of the, the sparkle sticks. There's like 10 sticks in there. Five bucks. I mean, I'm never going to say no to sparkles and glitter. So sparkles and glitter. And then they have like the place where I got the entire back wall is like a U shape like this. Cause there's stairs that go upstairs and there's way more stuff upstairs. The whole back corner is all brooches. And I'm not like little, like huge rhinestone, huge brooches. I buy them I, and they're like 12, 20 bucks. Break the hardware off, sew horse hair on it, boom, hair accessory. I love it. All oh the God. time. Oh. I got boxes. I have boxes of sparkle jazzles. So that's what I call them. Spark I jazzle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I have, um, you know, those little like tool for like, they're the little like little drawer units for tools and like we use them for yeah. like bobby pins and stuff. They have like a big tall one. I have that for my actual pins. And then there's a small one where it's like three big drawers on the sides and then like 12 in the middle. Full of sparkle, just sparkle sticks. Sparkle sticks, the little twisties that like twist in. Yeah. The twist in. And I have some little sparkle clips that I don't particularly like. And that literally takes up that whole thing. I am a crazy person. I love it so much. It makes me <laughs> so happy. I, um. I'm hair accessories are part of wig design for me. I'm constantly <laughs> trying to add as much sparkle jazzle to a show as I can. Um, well, before we go, if you could give a piece of advice, and I, I am going to say this now that we're going to schedule a second one. Great. Um, <laughs> in true. like November, and then we can um, be all Christmassy and get ready for, for the holidays. Yes. Um, I'm planning on doing a set of holiday wigs too. So Maybe we can wear wigs for that. Or when we do it again, we'll wear some fabulous. This is a wig. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what advice would you give to like a young Bobby? Okay. Okay. Or someone like you that wanted to start out in in this industry. Um. It might be two different things. <laughs> right. Right. Um. I don't know. I would just say that like. Don't let people get to you and just do what you feel is right and what you want to do and just listen to yourself. Yeah, it's so true. Somebody, who was it, if anybody knows this watching that said um, other people's opinions of you are none of your business. Yep. And I think that that's really true, uh, especially when it's not concerning a collaborative design effort, but in a, in a more personal way, you know, to, to, to stay true to what you want to do. And I think and you've also, done that. 
And I, I've tried to, yeah. And like, especially in recent years, like when I got through the bitter Betty phase and all of that, and like, I kind of just stopped doing drag race crap and like, stop. I mean, I still do them occasionally, like for friends and whatever. Like Jackie Cox is one of my closest friends. So of course I'm going to do wigs for her for drag race. Like, of course I'm going to like, I will of course help you because you are one of my favorite people and you have booked me in drag in the past. So of course I'm going to help you. You help me, I help you. Um, but like, I realized the same thing where it's like people's opinions of you don't matter. And also part of what you also have to realize as an adult is that, and I've, I've, I've dealt like I've dealt with this on both sides. People are going to have an image in their head of you from whenever they first met you or whatever. So like, if I was like an asshole to you in college, which there were several people that I was assholes to in college that like have this image of me in, in their head, even though that was 15 years ago, we're both adults now and we've grown up and learned and whatever that's in, in their head. That's who I am. And I know the same thing for me. Like there was like a guy that I went to high school with that, would call me a faggot and would like aim dodgeballs at my head and all of this stuff. And then ended up marrying a friend of mine from college. And I was like, you married Alan? What? And then I talked to her about it. Um, Cause I had made some posts about being made fun of in high school and Carrie, her name's Carrie. She commented on it. Her name's Carrie Potter. <laughs> so Carrie, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean her, that was her maiden name, her, uh, Mary names Kay, uh, Carrie Murray now. So Carrie Murray for Carrie Potter. Um, You're like, hey, Carrie Murray. <laughs> hey, Carrie, what you doing, girl? Watching this for no reason. Um, but like her and I talked about that and I made a post about like, you know, when you come out and this, that, and the other thing and people make fun of you and you just have to remember, stay true of who you are and it gets better. And like, you'll find people eventually that are on the same wavelength and people that compliment you. And like, you will eventually find your, your tribe. It might take you a while, but you'll get there. Um, and so she had made a comment on it or had DM'd me on Facebook, whatever. And I commented, I was like, you do realize that your husband was one of the most nastiest people to me ever in high school, right? Like, you know this. And she was like, she was like, totally. She was like, I know. She was like, he and I have talked at length at like how much of an asshole he was to people in high school. And like, he feels really bad about how he, he's, she's like, not just specifically you, like just a lot of people, he feels terrible about what he did. And like, he was young and didn't know. And so like, I know he's a better person now because he's married to a friend of mine and I, they have like three beautiful kids and like, I see them on Facebook, but in my head, he's still that guy, that guy that aimed dodgeballs on my head and called me a faggot. And I'm like, sorry, I got cast as the baker and into the woods in 10th grade and you're the wolf in as a senior sorry about it yeah like it was it was so dumb but like it just you have to you just have to remember that i think is like like opinion people's opinions of you don't matter and everyone's gonna have a different view of who you are than who you really are right because they don't know this you they knew that you and hopefully we've all evolved and grown up, you know, and made different choices and gained some empathy and perspective in our life that we can then look back and and either reckon those things or at least appreciate that we didn't do. And, and even in our my own life, I, you know, I look back and I'm like, well, I probably could have handled that a little bit differently. Oh, I constantly, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, oh my God, that one time in third grade I did this thing. Like I constantly... I'm, my head is constantly like, I could have done that differently. Why are you such a creep and a weirdo all the time? <laughs> I'm constantly second-guessing myself with stuff like that. Oh, like, I'm like, oh, it was high school. Like, why do I still think about this? Let it this? go. Let it go. But like, I do, you know. It's, I know, it's hard. Uh, it's hard, it but once I get well, in that head, I'm like, what happened? I, like I said, we'll plan this so everybody, you know, yes. keep your eyes peeled for um, a holiday special <laughs> with Bobby. Well, we should do like like 12 days of Christmas and every day it's a different interview. That'd be cute. Oh my gosh. With themes. I love themes yes. and costumes. So I love a theme. 
Oh man, it's so good. Um, but I'm so happy that you said yes when I asked you to do this. Oh, anytime and, I'm not you. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah, super fun. And hopefully, you know, people enjoyed it and, and we'll share it into the ether. I love it. And I miss you. And I miss you um, check out uh, bobbypins.com if you need anything fabulous for your hair needs. And then his Instagram. Let's do it one more time just so people can see it real quick. Easy, which is also my screen name on YouTube and TikTok. And then bobbypins.com is my business page. Yes. I thought about changing so like everything's more cohesive, but like I feel that like with TikTok and with YouTube, like I'm representing myself. I'm yeah. not necessarily representing Bobby Pins. No, just keep it. It's people yeah. get it. It's fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. people got it. All right. All right. Get bye, it. Bobby. All right, bye. Thank you so much. This is great. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>